My parents didn't let me out of the house for weeks after the typhoon. Because of all the diseases that were spreading, all the dead bodies dying. And when I finally got out, I couldn't recognize my hometown anymore. Structures were damaged, the poles, wires, and trees were everywhere. And dead bodies lie there. Papalapit na, papalapit na po ang malakas na bagyong nagbabantang manalasa sa Kabisayan. Alamin natin kung nasa na po yung bagyo na yan. Pati na po ang karagdagang itong si Bagyong Yulang. This storm is sandy size and blue pa ang maglalantol sa biyernes ng alauna hanggang alas tres ng hapon sa Hamar o Leyte. Tatawin po ito ng Visayas. November 3, 2013. A day that no one in my hometown will ever forget. A day that is now considered a holiday. And a day that changed the lives of many forever. Cloban City is used to typhoons. We experience about a handful every year and we've braved through plenty of strong ones. This typhoon, however, was different. It was so much stronger. And little did we know just how much damage it would actually cause to our homes and families. The day before the typhoon, it was sunny. There was barely any wind and everyone took it as a sign that the typhoon wouldn't be as strong as others said it would be. And I think that was our first mistake. We underestimated the strength of the typhoon and the people living in the coastal barangays chose not to evacuate. Of course, we knew it would be strong, but we weren't afraid of it. And, and that was our second mistake. We should have been afraid. Because when Typhoon Yolanda hit our city at 5 a.m. in the morning, there was nothing we could do to save ourselves anymore. There was absolutely zero visibility. Strong winds hit us at 315 kilometers per hour, and the gusts were up to 380 kilometers per hour. My classmate at the time, she lived in a house which had a glass wall, and they were right next to the sea. So when the storm surge happened, the wall broke. And the water was rising quickly. And my friend and her dad, her other siblings, they were able to escape. They went to the, they went to the top of the stairs and stayed there. But their mom didn't make it. She was holding onto the chandelier as strong currents went past her. But she was hit with a piece of wood. And she lost her mom. We actually lived far from the seaside and we lived in a two-story building wedged between two other buildings. My family was lucky. We were very lucky. But why did Tacloban City experience the most detrimental effects of Super Typhoon Yolanda compared to its neighboring cities? First, let us zoom out and understand why typhoons are prominent in our country. The Philippines is located in Southeast Asia along the typhoon belt in the Pacific, making it a frequent receiver of typhoons every year. Its geographical location and the physical environment cause the high vulnerability and high susceptibility to hydrometeorological hazards. There are three major geohazards that can be triggered by tropical cyclones. Number one, storm surge. Number two, flooding. And number three, landslides. In 2013, the country experienced its nightmare turned into reality super typhoon Yolanda, causing tremendous damage to infrastructures and taking the lives of thousands of Filipinos. In the city of Tacloban, having 128 barangays had the most devastating impact. One key player that was responsible for this was the city's geographical environment, mainly the elevation profile and the long range of gently sloping coastal areas. Storm surge. Referring to figure 1, 
The land masses extend outward into the sea, such as those in transects A to A' prime and C to C' prime of Leyte. These areas are vulnerable to flooding because they are surrounded by coastal waters and can become flooded from several directions at once. On the other hand, B to B' prime has a steep slope near the coast, effectively reducing the area's inundation extent. D to D' prime has a relatively higher elevation, but also has a flat landscape. Thus, the more gentle the slope of the coastline is, the more susceptible it is to storm surges. Floodings. Flood, the most common sort of natural disaster, will happen when an excess of water submerges normally dry ground. Floods are frequently brought on by prolonged periods of heavy rain, thick snow melt, or storm surges from tropical cyclones or tsunamis in coastal Italy. According to Think Hazard Or, or Region 8 or Eastern Visayas region, hazard levels for both urban flooding and coastal flooding are high in terms of susceptibility. We can see that this in map that the Loban and shaded in red, indicating high hazard level for both urban flooding and coastal flooding. Landslides. A landslide generally refers to the downhill movement of rock, soil, or debris. The term landslide can also refer to the deposit that is formed by a landslide event, which is caused mainly by gravity, friction, or water. In the city of Tacloba, landslides were observed on slopes near road cuts. These road cuts often have very steep slopes and the underlying rocks are fractured and unstable. As a result, road blockages due to landslides during typhoons may be a recurring problem. Summarized, susceptibility to surges, floodings, and landslides in the moment city is due to their natural and built environments. The new and world guides are highly exposed to climate related hazards, which is attributed to the high susceptibility to particular hazards and to the structure of their houses, which may not provide protection during disasters. Similarly, 50 per guides are moderately exposed, since they are adjacent to those that were identified to have high exposures. The remaining 67 barangays have low exposure since they are located in the downtown area of the Cloven, which is a highly built up commercialized area. Interventions made by the local governmental unit of Tacloban City. Drawing lessons from Super Typhoon Yolanda, the city government of Tacloban City promised to build back better. The strategy included relocating people away from coastal areas that will likely be hit again. LGU pledged to build 205 homes to accommodate about 1 million people living in coastal danger zones. Another problem was the water supply. The LG of Tacloban City provided two units of 100 cubic meter capacity water reservoir and delivered water to all local government-owned properties. Moreover, Yolanda survivors' concerns about their livelihood were being addressed. Employment and training were being provided. In research in Luciano, the local government laid out a comprehensive disaster risk reduction management plan for 2016-2022 giving specific tasks to every city government office. One of the things that really crippled Tacloban was the massive looting. All police and military will focus on securing the facilities, especially the business facilities. Price control monitoring will also be intensified after disaster because some businessmen will take advantage of the situation. With the help of non-government organizations, evacuation centers have been constructed in strategic areas. Some private schools and churches have been identified as temporary shelters in case of disasters. Village chiefs are also better prepared to handle disasters with the training provided by the city government. It was a hard time for everyone. But it could have been far less damaging had we all been prepared for it. Many people didn't even know what a storm surge was. We lacked awareness. We paid heavily In a country that is prone to experience several typhoons every year is something that people should take seriously to lessen the damages it may cause. 
people should have a concrete plan for all the possible events that may occur when a typhoon strikes. And these include for people to stay vigilant with your surroundings and check out for all possibilities of danger that may occur in your place. Make sure to have an emergency kit and to know all nearby evacuation sites that you and your family may go to when it is advised to evacuate. Follow your LGO guidelines and evacuate immediately to ensure the safety of everyone. Lastly, don't forget to listen to the radio or TV for more important updates and advisories regarding the typhoon. Being prepared about what we will do is one way to help us lessen the disaster caused by the typhoon. Listening and being obedient to the warning of the authorities will make a huge difference between life and death.